I'll do the housekeeping. If anyone else joins, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Caroline Clark. I work in the local delivery team of APSS with my colleague Stuart, who's also on the call and helped me out, and Neil. Um, so this afternoon, we're going to talk about network arrangements. Um, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a big fan of network arrangements in primary authority and business support, as well as a big fan of primary authority. Um, so I'm going to run through a few examples, and I should have um, colleagues Nick Redrop and Richard Strawson on the call who are going to support me, hopefully. They, they did yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, Caroline, yeah. Nick. Hi, Nick. And Richard. Yep, yeah, I'm here. Oh, great. Well, I feel a lot better now, thank you. So just to run through some housekeeping, I'm sure you've all heard this many times this week and over the past few months. Um, if you could please keep your camera and your microphone off um, just for the, the sound quality. Um, the session is being recorded, um, so please be mindful of that. Feel free to use the, the chat facility and the raise your hand facility. Um, these virtual events can be quite isolating. Um, so please get involved and raise your hand throughout if you prefer, or we can do questions at the end. I'm quite quite happy either way. Um, but just before we start, because they do feel quite isolating, would everyone mind just putting the camera on and saying hello, just so I can see faces and have like some interaction before we start? Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Bonjour. <How's it> going? <laughs> Oh, yeah. It, thanks for that. I don't feel quite so alone now. I know you're all there in the background. Now, uh, mm. May say hello at some point just uh, throughout the session, just so we uh, we know we're not alone. So um, I don't want to make an apology on behalf of my my eight year old son who's self isolating mm. because it's not his fault. More an advance warning that we may have um, a guest appearance again, um, as we did on Tuesday for those of you that were on that call. Mm. Um, so, yeah, apologies in advance, kind of, I'm not apologising for him. So, today I want to talk to you about network arrangements. We'll get the slides back up, sorry, Stuart, have I messed it up asking everyone to say hi? Yeah, it's fine, yeah, all right. Thanks, Stuart. So today I want to talk to you about some network arrangements, supporting business through primary authority um, with some live examples. Um, others are available on the market and I'm sure you're part of one yourself or looking to develop one. Um, so first slide, please, Stuart. So this, just give it another click. So this quote kind of really struck the chord for me. You may have seen it on other presentations this week. Um, but local authorities have um, been instrumental in the COVID response, um, and that's been recognised across government. Primary authority as part of that has been talked about um, across government in a way that I've um, not known before and a lot of colleagues haven't known before. And the way that local authorities are supporting businesses through primary authority has really kind of shown its value over recent months in um, cross-government departments asking is this business in a primary authority questions that they may not have asked uh, previously so the local authority response to the pandemic has been uh, really high, highly regarded and has really put primary authority on the map next slide please <coughs> so network arrangements we always talk about how we want to simplify the way regulation is delivered and for businesses the navigation of regulation can be quite complex um, with areas of overlap and regulation uh, can be confusing things like fireworks and underage sales health and safety or fire safety and for businesses to establish who's responsible for that area of regulation and the ge different geographical areas and setups of local authority can be quite confusing um, can be quite confusing for us at times never mind for businesses so a single point of contact is really valued by business. One example of this, um, when I was primary authority officer, was that a business said um, the single po point of contact was more valuable than anything else and that the price they paid, it's not about cost, but the price they paid for their primary authority 
was worth its money just to have the, just to have that single point of contact and that they paid more for that for a single point of contact in their insurance business so we want to improve and simplify communication between businesses and regulators that's something we're all well aware of let's move on to the next slide please so network arrangements, what do I mean by them? Um, it's where different local authorities work with one another to support a business in, in primary authority. Um, a business will very rarely only need support in one area of regulation. There may be a more prominent area of fire safety or health and safety or trading standards, but it's quite likely that at some point um, in product development or in expansion of their business or opening of new premises, they will need some support from all areas of regulation. So network arrangements, this is in, included in the statutory guidance, which I'm sure you all read on a regular basis. Um, and at section 18, I think, of the statutory guidance, it's about network arrangements. And it talks about um, having a single point of contact for the business and enforcing authorities and the value that has. So the primary authorities will often share data and other information between themselves and arrangements to discuss primary authority advice or advice to local authorities and have a consistent approach. It's the collaboration of the, uh, the local authorities and fire services that really it adds value to a partnership. Next slide please Stuart. So I just wanted to give a couple of examples, um, others are available but two that I've, um, I've worked quite closely with over the years and that's the Greater Manchester Regulatory Centre of Excellence. And we've got Nick Redrop on the call. He's already said hello and confirmed he's here. So the Greater Manchester Regulatory Centre of Excellence is the makeup of 10 um, unitary authorities in Greater Manchester and a single fire and rescue service. Um, and this has been developed over the past three, four years. And as part of their Better Business for All programme, Primary Authority is their, their key selling point. Um, they work very closely with the, the Growth Hub and they have a dedicated coordinator. So I've, I've named this the, the gateway approach, and I'm sure Nick will agree, in that one single local authority acts as the gateway for those um, other 11 regulators for businesses to access regulatory support. So Salford acts as the gateway authority um, and that's where the coordinator sits and um, that's that's Nick, he's been in post for about three years um, and the expertise and experience across Greater Manchester is all fed in through, through Nick. Nick can manage the partnerships, manage the administration, the setup, the application, the invoicing, all the things that take time for any of the 11 authorities. Nick can coordinate that and that gives the time for the officers to do what they do best in um, giving advice to the businesses and issuing the advice to the businesses. Next slide please. So Greater Manchester um, has a strong his history of collaboration between the local authorities and the fire service and this was just further strengthened by their Better Business for All programme. And they did want a formalised offer of primary authority across across the region. So they developed primary authority in 2000, PBA, PBFA steering group in 2016, with their flagship offer being primary authority, which was launched in November 2017. And then Nick came into post and um, leads and coordinates that programme since March 2018. Next slide, please. So progress, progress to date, they have 40 active primary authority partners um, and over 700 businesses. Um, this consistency across Greater Manchester in things like cost recovery and the process and the uh, review and development and um, mm -hmm. implementation of all the partnerships. And they've had some regulatory excellence awards. Uh, they were the winners of the BBFA category and shortlisted for an LGA award in the business transformation. So Nick, that's a very kind of swift overview. Did you want to add anything that I completely missed? Uh, 
I don't think you have missed anything. It was, it was like, it was your baby, wasn't it, Caroline? So you, you should take a bit more of the credit for it. Uh, it was your baby, and I sort of just took on took on after you'd uh, you'd you'd set it all up, really. Um, so yeah, I mean, that sort of details the 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 work that we've gone through and and the progress we've made, and and it's not um, it's not perfect. It still needs quite a lot for us to improve it, and we are working on that all the time. Um, but putting putting in place sort of consistent systems and processes for reviewing partnerships and 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 I guess the, the the biggest thing is is having a dedicated resource does mean that those partnerships that previously might have slipped through the net because officers were too busy to chase businesses up on getting paperwork signed or uh, or drawing up the paperwork um, haven't slipped through the net anymore. So um, so I do think there's there's huge benefit in that. Um, and and that's why the sort of numbers of partnership have, have increased year on year. So now, now you've mentioned that I was involved in it um, <laughs> beforehand, I will say um, it, it's not a criticism of the scheme. Everybody, all regulatory services are very busy. Um, but as you said, there's a lot of um, joint working and historic um, relationships with, were strong between Greater Manchester authorities. But to have that buy in and to present to um, senior leadership to say this is what we were looking to do set up bbfa it was a bit there was slight resistance as i'm sure there are in some areas with some authorities saying we just don't have the capacity to do that um so we're not going to sit here and say how wonderful and everything um, went perfectly smoothly and um, to have all the authorities engagement from the outset um was a slight challenge because of resources but as it's developed um, and as we know we've got the coordinator and I think that's one of the main benefits of, of your um, centre of excellence Nick is that you have a coordinator to pull that all together so that each authority haven't, haven't, aren't having to use their own resources for the invoicing, the management and that sort of thing and they can use their skills and share experience and expertise to fully support the business in all areas of regulation and I think businesses really do value that and I know you've done some evaluation on it, um, but <coughs> excuse me. But that gateway approach is a big selling point for local authorities to engage with it, knowing that the management of it is um, through the gateway authority and, and ultimately Nick. So, thank you. Next slide, please. So, before Nick disappears, has anyone got any questions for Nick about the Greater Manchester? Not that you're disappearing, Nick. You're staying. You're staying where you are. No, I'm staying put. Yeah. Right, thanks. So um, again, another approach to network arrangements, which I'm sure lots of authorities use. Um, I'll just pick three examples. Or this would be a really long session, and I appreciate everyone's very teamed out this week and the past few months. Um, is what I've called the lead authority approach. Um, an example of this is is East Sussex, where the three authorities, um, East Sussex County Council, East Sussex Fire and Rescue, and there are five district councils within East Sussex as well. Um, but a number of businesses have primary authority partnerships with all three, or maybe one or two, and there's a lead authority approach. So East Sussex, for example, will be the primary authority for trading standards, um, and East Sussex, obviously, Fire and Rescue for the fire, and then the business, if they have um, environmental health needs as well, they can become a partner. So they have SLAs between the three um, authorities to support the business in all areas of regulation. And it may be that um, fire service or training standards or the environmental health service are mm -hmm. the lead authority and have a set number of hours to call on resources from other areas. But again, that's managed by the lead authority. So the invoicing is led by them. We've got Richard Strawson on the call from East Sussex. Hi, Richard. Hello. Hi. So, did you want to add anything to that very brief overview of the lead authority approach in East Sussex? Uh, no, I mean, it just mirrors what you've already said, really, which is businesses are not clear on um, who regulates what, um, it's very blurred within a particularly a two-tier 
local authority system. So uh, where we're a county and we've got, as um, uh, Caroline said, five districts and boroughs and and uh, local businesses don't understand the nuances of local government, whereby, you know, we do trading standards, we do some elements of planning, whereas the districts do other elements of planning and licensing and environmental health. So actually taking that lead officer approach, uh, lead authority approach just works for businesses. Going back to what you were saying, Caroline, about uh, the strength is in the single point of contact. So with the primary authorities that we've got, uh, where we partner up together, uh, then they do value having one nominated point of contact. And it just means that they come to us, for example, in trading standards, and then we uh, triage it through to uh, colleagues in the districts or fire and rescue uh, and get the answer they need and, and feed it back. And then they only have to ask once. Thanks, Richard. I did try to get some numbers together for today, looking at the different um, local authorities, the different tiers, the different areas of regulation and the overlap, but it became too confusing. Um, and I was looking, and I know, and I've lived and breathed local authority for a number of years. So for businesses to have that single point of contact, I don't think we appreciate how much that's valued by a business. So to be able to go to a trading standards contact and say, I've got this issue with what turns out to be health and safety or even other services within your local authority, like pest control or waste disposal or um, things like that, having that point of contact into the council. They might come to you with very um, bizarre requests, but at least you can find out the right person for them in some cases. And it might be outside of primary authority, it's all about that relationship building. So one example, um, we can't we can't do a presentation without mentioning COVID and giving an example of, of work on there. So next slide, please. And Richard, you may have to fill in some gaps with this because I'm uh, I've got the the bare bones of it. But I do think this is a great scheme, and this was um, born out of the primary authority partnership. Obviously, we know that um, the restrictions regulations aren't parts of um, primary authority under the scope of primary authority or health and safety is um, so Eastbourne Hospitality Association have a primary authority partnership with East Sussex Fire and Rescue Trading Standards as the lead and um, Lewis and Eastbourne Council Trading um, Environmental Health and obviously the hospitality sector has been hit um, extremely hard with um, business closures and restrictions so the Eastbourne Hospitality Association worked with their primary authority partners to develop um, a COVID ready scheme um, and which was launched earlier this year um, in the in the summer and is supported as well by um, I can't think of the name of it Richard the tourism body yeah. it's um it, I think you're on mute yeah, it's the Eastbourne Tourism Association, I think, which springs out of uh, Eastbourne District Council. So they developed a scheme for um, local businesses, bars, restaurants, hotels, anyone in the hospitality sector um, to support them and give confidence to consumers to come back to Eastbourne and knowing that they have made, um, made steps to make the businesses safe to return to. So that was uh, that's also been in, in PA news and was uh, used as an example as a case study on NFCC Business Safety Week as well in, in September. So it just shows primary authority the relationships, um, how they how they develop, um, and how the three regulators work together to support Eastbourne Hospitality. So is there anything else you wanted to mention about specifically um, East the East Sussex lead authority model, Richard? Before I move on. No, I mean, just touching on that, I suppose, uh, with that COVID ready scheme, uh, that was about Eastbourne Hospitality Association knowing the strength of primary authority uh, and the contacts that they had within the primary authority scheme. And although COVID legislation falls outside primary authority, it was recognising that they valued um, the strength of input, particularly from environmental health on that, uh, concerning risk assessments. And so we we were the, the go-to people um, to help and advise them on the development of their scheme uh, so that they all their members, their 110 members in Eastbourne, could all benefit from having uh, a common standard of um, preparedness uh, against COVID. So this was very much over the summer period where 
obviously they've been shut down for a long period of time and they were very keen to open up their businesses during the summer period and uh, i think uh, you know a wi widely publicized scheme uh, wild wild wildly applauded uh, but they put in a lot of work themselves to get the branding and the distribution uh, but we were able to give that kind of regulatory advice and support which gave them the confidence in what they were saying thanks richard um has anyone got any questions for richard about east sussex so next slide please stuart so the third approach, and I'm sure um, other areas, there are a number of other areas that work this way as well, is the regional approach. Um, and again, Richard doesn't get off lightly because he's he's involved in this as well. So um, the regional approach is the Biz Business Advice and Support Partnership, um, BASP or, or BASP as some may call it, but I'm Northern and I say BASP. Um, so the Business Advice and Support Partnership is um, a partnership of regulatory services across the southeast. Um, and it shares knowledge, resources, expertise to provide the best support um, for local businesses. And it, again, it covers all areas of regulation, training standards, environmental health and fire and rescue. And the authorities that are involved are East Sussex Training Standards, um, East Sussex Fire and Rescue, Kent, Hampshire, Slough. Who have I missed, Richard? Yeah, no. Hampshire Fire and Rescue as well. Um, are are involved. So it, I think that's everyone, yeah. Not missed anyone, I'm sure I haven't. So next slide please. No. Oh, I've got them all on there. No, I haven't missed anybody. Brilliant. So these authorities work in um, a regional um, in the southeast rather than having that network arrangement of a single point of entry to primary authority, each partnership is um, the legal entity of a primary authority partnership is with each local authority um, and they call on resources and expertise and um, experience from their partners in BASP to support their business and that might be because of, of resources or um, volume of work. Um, examples include when a trading standards partner wanted a number of labels checking in a very short space of time for trading standards for safety um, calling on other authorities to support them with that and having that network and that's a, a huge selling point for the business as well knowing that the resources will be called upon to support them in their needs if there's um if there's a huge demand at any one point so collectively the authorities serve um over three and a half million residents and over two million businesses um and they have major ports and airports in the southeast um, <coughs> So again, it's the one-stop shop, that gateway approach, and it's taking away that um, uncertainty for business of where do I go for this, who covers this, which area covers it um, in this local authority, is it, the, is it the district, is it the county council, is it, is it the fire service, things like petroleum. So the partnership has continued to evolve um, and is developing um, a wider network of regulators and it, it continues to grow. I think some of that growth, um, as with many things at the moment has been halted with the priorities of the COVID response from local authorities. Next slide, please. So uh, BASP also has um, arrangements with shared regulatory services, allowing primary authority advice to be provided for devolved matters in Wales. Um, and at the last count, I think this is still accurate over 120 primary authority partnerships um, are delivered through through BASP. There's a peer review process which is of huge value to regulators knowing that you're able to go to a colleague in another authority to sense check and uh, peer review your primary authority advice before it's being issued um, and that just adds to the strength of the primary authority advice um, should it ever be challenged. So it makes the process more robust um, and gives extra confidence for the business and the local authorities. So the emphasis um, of BASP is on coordinated partnerships to maximise the number of businesses that are um, supported through primary authority. These are businesses that may not seek to um, enter into a primary authority partnership themselves, but will reap the benefits of primary authority through their trusted trade association or similar. 
So particularly SMEs um, to receive regulatory support and advice. Next slide, please. I might have to do a wave in a minute because I'm feeling a bit lonely. Um, so Richard, have I given BASP the, um, the credit it deserves or is there anything you want to add? Well, obviously, I'd always take a, a moment to promote it here. But uh, yeah, from our point of view, this was about recognising that, um, uh, you know, there are plenty of businesses out there that need advice. Um, actually, why don't we collaborate together as authorities, come under a single branding, uh, which is uh, quite professional, quite um, the imagery we use in the branding is, is not naturally local authority. Uh, and therefore, I think there's a strength in in portraying us as a, as the professional go-to people, which we are. But when some people of make the association with local authorities, they think that perhaps it's going to be second best. So that's why we rebranded. And whilst we all can act independently, we act under a, a collaborative brand. And so we've got the shared pricing structure and approach. Plus, then we have. Uh, the added benefit of greater resilience in terms of capacity to deal with incoming inquiries, whether it be primary authority based or just uh, um, single uh, request for business advice. And we've got the capacity to deal with that across the authorities. So, yeah. Thanks, Richard. One thing I haven't mentioned about either of the network arrangements is the pricing structure, um, which is consistent in Greater Manchester and, and in Bass. Um, and obviously in the lead authority approach in East Sussex. Um, and I think that's something that we, that regulators often feel quite uncomfortable about because none of us are salespeople. Um, but often when you get to the discussion of um, cost to a business, to a business, it's, it's not as daunting as you may imagine because it is cost recovery um, and you know, you can't make a profit on that. So that having that, that one, point of contact for the invoicing as well is a big selling point to business of not getting invoiced by by three different um, regulators for that product. Um, it's all very quiet. Could we have a wave? Please. Just make sure everyone's still here. Hi, I know it's really tragic, but it is quite isolating talking to a camera on your own. Um, Brian, are you asleep? <laughs> There's always one and it's always you. <laughs> um, has anybody got any questions for either me, Nick, Richard or anyone else on the call about network arrangements? I am, it sounds tragic, but I am a big fan of network arrangements mm -hmm. and this, this week of wonder is all about um, working together for our future. Network arrangements and supporting colleagues. There's been quite a lot of talk uh, different sessions about how primary authority can be quite an isolating area of work where you feel like you're the only person dealing with that business. So I think communication, especially at this time when everyone's working from home, um, is all the more important to have colleagues to support you um, and sound check um, your thoughts or your processes or, you know, before you speak with your business or issue advice. Um, so that's something that's really been highlighted, especially in the past few months. Brian? Yeah, I just wanted to hark back to um, JJ's question yesterday about dealing with um, partners that don't want to engage and, and how to get rid of them. Um, is that something that we could put into this forum? Yeah, if, um, yeah, yeah on yesterday's session for people who weren't um, involved in that, um, there was a question about silent partners we'll call them, or partners that don't really engage with their primary authority or don't ask them for much um, support or advice. And that might be heightened because of COVID um, and other, other areas, but you want a true partnership. So OPSS, they do monitor the numbers of partnership, but there is a real focus on the quality of the partnership. So those initial discussions with your business, Brian, would be to kind of engage with them, look at areas that you could support. They may not know they need support from it engage with enforcing authorities and say, I have a primary authority partnership with this business. Have you got any issues or feedback? Um, 
because you are the single point of contact for that business. So to gather intelligence from your um, enforcing colleagues might be of help, obviously with your business's permission, to look at areas of focus and make them realise the value you can add to their partnership that they may not realise it. Obviously your review of your partnerships as well is really important to be able to say, look, this is what we plan to do this year. We've not done it for X, Y, Z reasons. What are our priorities for next year? Um, what you don't want is the review to go for you to go and review your partnership and say we didn't do anything we were supposed to last year and we've no reason for it. So I, I understand it's frustrating having those silent partnerships, but a lot of activity on primary authority is led by the primary authority, um, unless it's a very high volume um, request from your business. So I don't know if anyone wants to comment on that. That's that's my view um, from being active in primary authority partnerships. Has anyone got anything they want to add to that for Brian? He's having some difficulty in engagement with some of his partners. Uh, I don't mind Caroline coming in on that. I, we, um, we, our, our partnership, because the Centre of Excellence is still relatively new, um, the partnerships are still relatively new, which means we've got pretty good engagement across all of them. Um, but, uh, and we've actually taken the last sort of few months to um, to sit down and, and virtually meet with all our partners again, just to review how the partnership's progressing, how it's going for them. So uh, so that's been really beneficial. Um, but trying to get them to lead some of those discussions around what they need as well. Um, but we have revoked partnerships um, where we've just had no contact and there's been no there's you know there's been no nothing coming back from the businesses and we have revoked those partnerships for that reason so um so i, I you know I, it, that option is always there and it's not something we particularly want to do but um but otherwise there's a danger that the partnerships or the business perceives the partnership as a as a as a shield to enforcement action which is obviously not what it's there for and so that's my view personally Thanks, Nick. Um, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Great minds. Um, you, don't, you don't want, if it's a true partnership, you work together um, and you look to address that. Um, you don't want businesses to think, I'll only call them up when I've got a problem because if there's no background work, it's as if the partnership doesn't exist, if there's nothing to, to support the relationship between the business and the primary authority. So, um, Dave, did you want to come in? Um, yeah, I, I'm quite happy to sort of suggest the approach that um, that, that we consider um, is that uh, part of our management model is to set up if you if you like a what, what we call a PA board um, so we we program and schedule regular meetings and we use that board to pick up on the priorities and identify the focus but also to develop the work plan uh, and that has certainly um, worked well for us um, from the uh, from a fire perspective with the partners that we've got um, across a number of sectors. So I thought that might be useful. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. And I've seen some of your um, your board documents and your review documents. So if you'd be happy to share those with Brian, I'm sure he'd be very welcome of them. Um, Richard. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, we uh, insist on prepayment for all our primary authorities. So that's usually an incentive to make sure they get value for money. So uh, we ask our primary authorities to pay for 20 hours of primary authority advice per year up front. Uh, and that usually uh, promotes the engagement. So we haven't actually got any, what I would call stagnant, silent PAs on our partnerships. Yeah, it's... Um when the when the invoice goes to the business the last thing they want to do is go to the finance and say um what did you get for those 20 hours last year or oh, nothing well why are we doing it again so that's a kind of a, an element to speak to your business and say look you've 10 hours remaining this is an area or this is new legislation that's coming up or these are the changes uh, that might affect your business so it's being proactive and thinking about ways to engage with them rather than i'll, I'll give you a ring if i need you um, and if it doesn't feel like a true partnership, it needs to be addressed in, and like Nick says, last resort would be to look to revoke um, if it's not true partnership working. So is your hand up again, Dave, or is it a legacy hand? I think it's been left up. 
Um, anybody else? Yes. So, so, sorry, it was a legacy hand. I didn't take it down. <laughs> oh, so you're just carrying on the wave. Um, has anybody else got any questions or anything they want me to cover? I'm happy to talk to anybody following on from this if you're looking to expand any network arrangements or your regional lead will be able to support you. So we have seven regional leads um, within the local delivery team and I'm sure they'll be able to, to support you. Now. I'm sure you've got the details of those. Does everyone know who their regional lead is? If, you, if you're in the East Midlands, it's me. <laughs> if you're in the West Midlands, it's Stuart. If you're in the South East, it's Teresa. If you're in the North West, it's um, Jackie Simons. In the North East, Jackie White. In Wales is um, Neil Boyle. Am I right, Stuart? Have I missed anybody? So your regional leads will be able to support you if it's something you're looking to do in your region. So it's all gone very quiet. Unless, have I missed anything on the chat, Stuart? Is there anything to pick up on there? There's a few general comments in there, uh, most recently from uh, uh, about furlough was a problem for one partner, intent to advertise, they're in partnership, pay their fees, but do little to engage, which I think is something that certainly when I've been a uh, primary authority officer, uh, I've experienced where businesses are very happy to promote on their website, they have a formal partnership arrangement with either a trading standards department or a number of regulators, but actually it's only marketing, there never is any true engagement. And um, as Richard said, you can have that large upfront fee. I know some authorities don't charge an annual fee um, and it's a difficult balance to, to strike. You can have 100 inactive partnerships um, but actually, what value is that delivering if they're not true partnerships? Yeah, yeah, just, just I think I'm back now. Picking up on the further point, that was quite an issue for a number of um, primary authorities where their, their point of contact had been furloughed, so there wasn't that much engagement. Um, so in the fire service, for example, I'm also the fire lead for um, as those that are on the call should hopefully know. Um, some of the examples of uh, support through primary authority in the emergency period have been, I think, brilliant from the fire service. Um, although they're very, um, they're very cautious of saying how wonderful they are. So that's that's my job to um, promote those case studies. And there are lots of them. We're always looking for case studies of um, business support through primary authority. Um, something you may not feel is a huge issue um, is quite impactful, and we want to showcase those as much as possible um, in PA news and maybe wider. So yeah, please send those into the local delivery and we'll put that email um, on the chat or speak to your regional lead or any of us on the call. Um, so I'll thank Richard and Nick um, for putting you on the spot um, quite late on and asking you to support me in this, but it did feel wrong talking about your um, your schemes without you here to say actually you're very wrong Caroline that's not how it works um, so thanks for joining me and supporting this and if there's nothing else the next session is at three o'clock um, which I hope you can all make it's that's the closing session and what does the next year hold for you um, if anything there's a video on there which I took the, the Christmas brief way too far I'm slightly mortified so if anything uh, join to see me um, make a fool of myself but thanks very much. It's been great to see you on so many sessions this week as well um, and for supporting the, um, the Week of Wonder. And if there's nothing else, I'll, I'll let you go and thank you for joining us. Take care. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.